Now let's go over the volume in the left ventricle. So we've dealt with all the pressure stuff, but now we're going to do some volume stuff. So you remember here the atria contracted. So when the atria contracts, so when this left atrium contracts into the left ventricle, it's going to move the left ventricle from its current level of 120 milliliters. It's going to push a little bit more into it because the atrium is pushing blood into the left ventricle. So when the atrium fully contracts, it'll put a little bit more blood into the left ventricle. So we actually get above the 120 milliliters mark. However, that's a little too much for the ventricle to handle. So a little bit goes back out into the back up into the into the atrium before the valves close. And then so that brings us back down to about 120. So now we are in we're past atrial contraction. We're past isovolumetric contraction because remember at this point the ventricle is sealed off by both valves and it's contracting. And then once it contra once it gets into rapid ejection phase, a lot of blood ejects out of the uh, aortic root through the aortic valve into the aorta uh, into the rest of the body. So we get this drop in ventricular volume, left ventricular volume. And notice how the shape of the curve, it drops rapidly initially and then sort of levels off. And that's sort of the same idea that we've been seeing with rapid ejection, then reduced ejection, rapid filling, then reduced filling. It just has to do with the amount of fluid that's in there. And then once we lose, once we pump out all of this blood volume, we go into isovolumetric relaxation. And at the end of isovolumetric relaxation, we go back into rapid ventricular filling. And this is why we're filling up so fast. Rapid ventricular filling and then reduced ventricular filling here. Same principle as before. And so that's the left ventricular volume line, left ventricular volume. Now let's look at the ECG. So the ECG, as I mentioned, was it's a, um, a measure of the electrical activity of the heart muscle, the myocardium. And so before the muscles contract, they send off a little signal, an electrical signal that can be picked up on the ECG, which is a machine with all these wires that gets hooked up to your chest and to your sides and to your arms and legs, and it can measure the activity of your heart. So this here is called a P wave, and that is a reflection of what's happening with your atria. So this signifies an atrial contraction, the P wave. This here is called a QRS complex, and this signifies a ventricular contraction. So QRS. And when you see this, it means that a ventricle has contracted. And we can see here that, remember I said that you give off the electrical signal first, then you get the muscle contraction. So we see the QRS complex here, and then up here, we get our ve left ventricle contraction, right? Right after that. Here, we get our P wave, that means atrial contraction is coming, and then we get our atrial contraction here afterward, right? And then this ECG line stays pretty even until we get to this, which is called a T wave. And the T wave is just vent uh, ventricular repolarization. So just returning back to baseline to, to do it all over again next cardiac cycle. And then this at the end, we're getting ready to do our P wave, our atrial contraction again for the next cardiac cycle. So the final thing that we'll look at is the heart sounds, are the heart sounds down at the bottom here. So I think we have this color down here, flora. So here, these are our heart sounds. And that is the traditional lub dub that you hear. So when you are using so let's put ECG here. So when you're using your stethoscope and you're listening to your friends or your chest and you hear the boop, 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 
boop, boop, boop, boop. Well, those are the heart sounds. Those, that's the traditional lub-dub that we talk about. So let's just talk about how we get those sounds. So at atrial contract, the two major ones that we're focused on are the ones between isovolumetric contraction, in, in isovolumetric contraction, and at isovolumetric relaxation. And so let's look at why. Now, there is a slight heart sound at atrial contraction, but we won't really worry about that one. There's also a slight heart sound here at rapid ventricular filling, but we won't worry about that one either because that's sort of specialist stuff. So we'll look at these two, this one here and this one here. This is the lub and this is the dub. So what makes this heart sound? Well, what makes a heart sound? The valves, when they close, they make a noise. It's just like slamming a door, actually. So when you have a valve that's open, so here's your open valve and here's blood rushing through. Eventually that valve is going to close. So when it closes again, the sound of the leaflets, the valve leaflets going back up and slamming together again, that noise is the heart sound that you hear. So this heart sound here, we can see atrial contraction, isovolumetric contraction. So at isovolumetric contraction, remember we said the mitral valve has closed. So at the end of atrial contraction, the mitral valve closes, and then you get isovolumetric because both valves are closed, right? So we hear this sound because right about there, your atrium, right about there, AV valve has closed. And then sound obviously takes a little bit of time to travel, so and it's a bit residual. So that's why you get the sound that appears afterward. And then we're going to sort of follow through with not too much, not too many sounds going on. And then we're going to get another sound. And that sound, well, what phase have we just finished? We just finished ejection and then reduced ejection. So in ejection phase, rapid ejection, we're, we're getting blood from the left ventricle out into the aorta. Reduced ejection, blood is still going through. It's just not going as fast, but blood is still going through until the pressure in the aorta is greater than the pressure in the left ventricle. So then this valve here closes because it's pushed closed. And that here is what happens right there, right there. That's when you get the aortic valve, valve, aortic valve closes. Now, you also get the pulmonary valve that closes at that time, just like how here you get both the left and right AV valves closing. But again, we're just sort of considered with the, or concerned with the left side of the heart here. And then here, remember I mentioned there is a heart sound there, but we won't worry about that one. And then the rest of the heart is pretty quiet for the rest of that cardiac cycle. So to recap, the main two heart sounds that we need to be concerned with are the lub, the first heart sound that happens after atrial contraction, and that's the closing of the atrioventricular valve, both of them. So that makes the first heart sound. Then the heart's pretty quiet, and then we get the second heart sound, and that's the closing of both the aortic and the pulmonary valves. Okay, there you have it.